In a room full of talismans, a young high school student awakens bound to a chair next to a blindfolded man. Satoru Gojo asks Yuji which one he is right now. Later, Yuji recalls someone by the name of Fushigoro and expresses concern about his senpai. However, Gojo reminds Yuji that his secret execution has already been scheduled, thus he has no time to worry about anyone else. The previous day, Yuji called Sugasawa Hospital to see if his grandfather was okay, but the old man insisted that Yuji go to his club instead. Megumi Fushigoro, a student at Jujutsu Tech, went to the grounds of Sugasawa High the night before in search of a cursed object. When he fails to do so, he calls Satoru Gojo, who informs him that he must wait until the object is found before going home. Yuji walks past Megumi, and the latter notices the cursed energy emanating from a possible connection to the cursed object. However, Yuji dashes off to the hospital to visit his grandfather before Megumi can confront him. Yuji and his grandfather argue while at the hospital. He asks Yuji to use his gifts to save others no matter what so he can die surrounded by people. Shortly after, Yuji's grandfather passed away peacefully. Megumi finally catches Yuji and asks him to give back the cursed object, but upon checking the box, Yuji realizes that his friends have taken the item and are going to unseal it at school tonight. At school, Yuji's friends are attacked by curses attracted to the special curse object. Megumi summons his divine dogs and with Yuji's help they manage to save his friends, but unfortunately, another curse emerges from the floor and catches Megumi off guard. Yuji ends up eating the cursed item, the finger of Ryoman Sukuna, the king of curses. Although Yuji easily defeats the curse with his new power, but Megumi is concerned that this is the actual worst case scenario. Rayomen Sukuna has been reborn and only desires to kill all of humanity, but surprisingly Yuji manages to regain control of his body while Megumi prepares to summon a Shikigami and proclaims that he will exercise the cursed Yuji. Before he's forced to make a decision, Megumi's sensei Satoru Gojo arrives. Gojo tests Yuji's control by asking him to switch with Sukuna for 10 seconds. Despite the curse attacking first, Gojo is easily able to evade all of Sukuna's strikes with incredible speed. Surprisingly, Yuji is effortlessly able to regain control of his body. Gojo decides to knock him out and tells Megumi that if Yuji can await as himself, he'll have real potential as a vessel. Inside the room filled with seals, while Yuji is bound to the chair, Gojo explains that the Jujutsu elders decided to have him executed. However, Gojo was able to plead Yuji's case and has had his sentence suspended. Yuji has potential as a vessel for Sukuna. Therefore, he can be used to consume the curse should he eat all 20 of his fingers. After visiting his friends in the hospital, Yuji meets up with Gojo outside the hospital to discuss his decision. They travel to the morgue where Yuji collects his grandfather's ashes and swallows the second finger indicating his firm resolve to become a sorcerer. Following Yuji's decision, Yuji travels with Gojo to the mountains of Tokyo, where Tokyo Metropolitan Jujutsu Technical School resides. Yuji is put to the test by the academy's principal, and after several tries, Yuji manages to pass the test. Gojo takes Yuji and Megumi to the station as they will be picking up another first-year student named Nobara. Nobara introduces herself with a proud attitude annoying Yuji and Megumi. Gojo takes them to an abandoned building close to a cemetery where a curse has taken over. She learns that Yuji swallowed Sukuma's finger and is grossed out by it. Gojo reveals this is a field test for Nobara and Yuji. Gojo gives Yuji a cursed tool, a knife called Slaughter Demon, that has been imbued with cursed energy. He also restricts him from using Sukuma's power. Tasked with eliminating all the curses, Yuji and Nobara head inside the building together. They begin searching together, but Nobara orders Yuji to search downstairs while she heads upstairs. While he's left confused by her attitude, Yuji is suddenly ambushed from above by a cursed spirit. His reflexes allow him to act quickly and slice apart the curse with his cursed tool. Inside the building, Nobara exercises small curses with her special curse techniques while Yuji uses the knife to take out other curses. Soon they find a boy captured by a powerful curse who threatens Nobara to surrender or else he will kill the boy. Despite the surrender, the curse decides to kill the boy, but Yuji breaks in through the rear wall and cuts off the arm of the curse, freeing the boy. Yuji secures the hostage and the curse attempts to flee. Before getting too far, Nobara uses her straw doll technique on the severed arm. With her resonance ability, Nobara exercises the curse by piercing the arm and her straw doll with a nail. Sometime later, Yuji and his team are tasked with rescuing people stuck within the domain expansion technique of a special grade curse that has recently emerged. A distraught mother of one of the detainees asks them to save her son. Megumi summons one of his divine dogs to warn them should any curse approach. The trio moves out to find any humans trapped inside and eventually happens upon their mutilated bodies. Amongst them, Yuji finds Tadashi, the son of the distressed woman. He wants to bring this body back outside, but Megumi refuses. Suddenly, Nobara is dragged through the floor by a curse. Megumi says they need to run, but they're both suddenly confronted by the special grade cursed spirit. 
Both boys are paralyzed by fear, but Yuji tries to act first by attacking it with his knife. His action costs Yuji his hand and breaks the knife. Yuji forces Megumi to go save Nobara while he holds the special grade curse. He tries to take help from Sukuna, but he refuses. Yuji struggles against the special grade and is unable to fight him because he doesn't know how to control curse energy. Megumi barely manages to save Nobara and flees the scene while giving a signal to Yuji using divine dogs. Yuji gives his body control to Sukuna, who kills the special grade curse with his domain expansion technique called Malevolent Shrine because the curse refuses to cooperate with him. Sukuna takes back the finger which had spawned the cursed womb in the first place. Irritated that he's been used for the brat's game, Sukuna demands that Yuji take back control. However, after hearing nothing back from Yuji, Sukuna lets out a deviously evil grin. While waiting outside the detention center, Megumi notices the cursed womb's innate domain has disappeared. He believes that all he has to do is wait for Yuji, but Sukuna arrives to tell him that won't be happening. He tells Megumi that Yuji can't switch back just yet, and to prevent him from taking back control, Sukuna rips out Yuji's heart. Sukuna effectively takes Yuji hostage now that switching back means death. In addition, Sukuna eats another one of his fingers to strengthen his control. He prepares to kill Megumi, and Sukuna admits it's for no particular reason. Megumi begins by summoning new and engaging Sukuna at close range. Sukuma simply toys with him until Megumi unleashes Orochi and lifts him into the air where Nu can strike repeatedly. However, Sukuna destroys the Great Serpent and uses the open space to throw Megumi around using power and agility. Without even using Jujutsu, Sukuna overpowers Megumi, forcing him to release Nu. Yuji takes back control of his body as he listens to Megumi admit he never regretted saving him. Out of time, Yuji succumbs to his wounds and tells his friends to live a long life. Later, Gojo finds out about Yuji's death and is irritated to find that higher-ups intentionally send Yuji on a dangerous mission to get rid of him. On the other hand, Megumi and Nobara mourn the death of Yuji. The second year Jujutsu students Maki Zenin, Tagi Inumaki, and Panda arrive to find them sulking. The second year students request Megumi and Nobara to join a special event where Jujutsu sorcerers compete against each other and they end up agreeing because they need to get stronger. On the other hand, an evil Jujutsu sorcerer named Subiru Gido meets up with special grade curses in a cafe where they plan to get rid of Gojo Satoru to dominate humanity and the world itself. Thought to be dead within Yuji's corpse, his mind still exists within the Sukuna innate domain. Pleased with himself, Sukuna sits atop a mountain of skulls and tells the brat not to look up at him without permission. Yuji begins fighting against Sukuna but is quickly overwhelmed. He wants to strike a deal with Yuji to fix his heart and asks for two conditions. The first is that he can use Yuji's body for a minute after using a key phrase, and the second is that Yuji forgets this conversation. Yuji refuses to lend his body ever again, but Sukuna promises not to hurt anyone within that minute. Yuji doesn't believe Sukuna will uphold his side of the bargain. Sukuna explains that a pact made with Jujutsu cannot be broken or else Sukuna will be punished. Yuji stubbornly refuses Sukuma and punches him, demanding being brought back to life without conditions. They both agree to fight to the death in order to determine who gets their way, and Sukuna instantly bisects Yuji's head. Just as Shoko prepares to dissect his body, Yuji suddenly comes back to life. Gojo is happy to see his student alive and high-fives him. He asks Shoko to leave Yuji as deceased in the reports to avoid anyone making an attempt on his life again. Gojo plans on training Yuji privately and will have him ready for the Goodwill event. On the other hand, Hito explains to Curses that the only way to defeat Gojo is by sealing him inside a special curse object called Prison Realm. Upon hearing this, one of the Curses named Jogo steps up for this task. Gojo gives special training lessons to Yuji so that he can prepare for the event while he heads out for a meeting. While traveling, Gojo notices a disturbance and steps out of the car while the special curse Jogo attacks him. Gojo avoids the cursed spirit attack as he crashes into the road, cracking the pavement. He asks who this curse is, but Jogo responds by creating a volcano head that blasts Gojo with a magma explosion from behind. Jogo believes that the deed is done, but the strongest sorcerer warns him not to write him off as he wipes away the ash and lava from his force field. He uses ember insects to attack the sorcerer, but Gojo stops them in their tracks. The insects use sound to explode, which Gojo avoids, but the volcanic cursed spirit axe quickly to strike the sorcerer with two more flame attacks. Once again, Jogo considers himself the victor too early when in reality his attacks have had no effects at all. Gojo comes back with Yuji while Jogo is enraged to the core. He ends up using his domain expansion technique called Coffin of the Iron Mountain to trap Gojo and Yuji inside. Gojo activates his own domain expansion called Unlimited Void which instantly takes over the domain of Jogo. Just when Gojo is about to exercise Jogo, another curse named Hanami appears and escapes with Jogo. 
Upon reaching her hideout, Gido explains that it is not easy to defeat Gojo, so they will launch a combined attack to trap him. A group leader named Mihito agrees and states that they should be cunning about it like true humans would be. Sometime later, Megumi and Nobara meet the third-year students named Mai Zenin and AI. They begin to mock Yuji's death, annoying Megumi and Nobara. Elsewhere, Satoru Gojo arrives to meet with Principal Gakiganji. During the meeting, Gojo bluntly says that the higher-ups want Yuji dead but he will not allow this to happen, and soon the new generation of Jujutsu sorcerers will take over this institute. One month later, three heavily mutated corpses are found in the Kaima Cinema movie theater. Mihito walks away from the scene but he's noticed by a young man who's able to see him. Yuji and another sorcerer are tasked with investigating this mysterious incident. At Satizakira High School, a young student named Junpei Yoshino is being bullied by his peers. Sometime later, Junpei skips school to see a movie at the theater. Unfortunately for him, his school bullies also happen to be attending the movie. The bullies at the theater are eventually killed by the cursed spirit Mihito. Junpei follows Mihito and confronts him in an alleyway, believing there is no way he could be human. When he catches up, Junpei asks Mihito if there was any way he could do the things that he does. On the other hand, Gojo entrusted Yuji's training on this mission to his dear friend Kento Nanami, the ex and sorcerer. In the present, Yuji and Nanami continue to follow the residuals to the roof of the building. As soon as they walk outside in the rain, they are greeted by what appears to be a curse. Another one appears, so Nanami suggests they each take on one. Yuji shows off the fruits of his training as he's able to channel curse energy effectively into his fists. Yuji strikes down his opponent using this attack, Nanami is impressed by this technique, and admits he can see what Gojo sees in Yuji. Nanami prepares to finish them off, but he realizes that these creatures are not curses. He brings them to Shoko, who confirms that they are ex-humans who were mutated by a curse technique, the same way the victims at the theater were. Meanwhile, Mihito takes Junpei to his hideout and teaches him about how curses manifest from humans' collective fears. Mihito was born from the hatred humanity feels for one another. The next day, Nanami explains that he was able to track down their target's hideout, However, he wants Yuji to follow a lead on Junpei, the only witness to the crime. Mihito shows Junpei a few of his experiments. Using his curse technique, he can change people's forms. He decides to show Junpei how large and small he can make human bodies. He believes there is no value or purpose to life because life is just a continuous cycle. Mihito believes Junpei doesn't need to quell his hatred because the two of them can do whatever they want. After Junpei leaves, he's spotted by Ajichi and Yuji as they drive slowly behind him. At the same time, Nanami enters Mihito's underground lair, claiming he doesn't take pleasure in killing humans if they are mutated and beyond saving. Mihito is happy to see a sorcerer weaker than Satoru Gojo, but strong enough for his experiments to arrive. They engage in battle, making Nanami notice Mihito's similarities to Satoru Gojo. Nanami is able to break Mihito's arm with his technique, catching the cursed spirit off guard. On the other hand, Yuji manages to take Junpei to another place to interrogate him. Mihito decides to engage in a conversation with Nanami, making the sorcerer realize that he must be connected to the special grade Gojo fought. Nanami and Mihito continue to battle underground. Nanami manages to fend off the transfigured humans. The sorcerer quickly realizes this matchup is a poor one for his technique. Mihito takes his opponent off guard with a burst of speed and attempts to reshape Nanami's soul. However, Nanami manages to protect his soul instinctively with his cursed energy. Mihito believes in a few more hits his opponent will cease to be human. Nanami flees down the sewer tunnel to stall until he's able to go into overtime. As the clock approaches 6, Nanami's cursed energy suddenly begins to rise, surprising Mihito. Nanami jumps and strikes one of the walls with the ratio technique collapse, an expanded curse technique. Mihito decides he better avoid this attack, but Nanami suddenly cuts his leg off and announces that he's retreating. Shortly after, the falling debris from the wall lands on the curse, appearing to crush him. Meanwhile, Yuji and Junpei are still together outside some stairs close to a river. Yuji decides to be straightforward and asks about what happened at the movie theater, but Junpei denies seeing anything and claims he's only been able to see curses as of recently. Hiro travels underground to find Mihito, impressed by the state Nanami left things in. Mihito is happy to have learned a lot more about himself from the battle. Later, Yuji befriends Junpei and ends up eating dinner at his home. However, the following night, Junpei's mother finds one of Sukuna's fingers on the table while a curse ends her life. Nanami and Yuji prepare to make a move on Mihito. Junpei returns to school after donning his mother's black clothes. Mihito and Kido watch from afar with the former casting a curtain over the entire place. They plan on leveraging Yuji into making a binding vow with Sukuna by using Junpei. They also were the ones who placed the Sukuna finger at Junpei's home. At school, Junpei attacks Shota, and just before he can kill him, Yuji enters the gymnasium and yells at his friend about what's going on. Junpei simply tells the Jujutsu sorcerer to stay out of this. 
Yuji tries to reason with Junpei who has lost his calm. Just as Yuji's pleas begin to reach Junpei, Mihito descends the school stairs towards them and interrupts. Mihito places his hand on Junpei's shoulder while immobilizing Yuji. He whispers into Junpei's ear that he is as foolish as those he looks down upon and that's why he'll die. Mihito uses idle transfiguration to mutate Junpei and force him to fight Yuji. Desperate, the vessel begs Sukuna for help only for Junpei to be denied. In his final moments, Junpei asks why as his transfigured body gives way and dies. More enraged than he's ever been, Yuji delivers a powerful right hook that smashes Mihito's face. The curse quickly recovers and begins to explain how physical attacks won't work, but his nose suddenly begins to bleed, surprising him. They exchange blows again at close range and Mihito pierces Yuji's body, stunning him. He attempts to touch Yuji's soul in an attempt to force him to switch. However, Sukuna takes this as an insult and tells Mihito to know his place. Back in reality, Yuji says he won't switch but he will kill Mihito. He smashes Mihito's face repeatedly with headbutts and appears to have the upper hand. Just as Yuji prepares to finish it, Mihito suddenly appears behind Yuji and nearly takes his head off. Fortunately, Nanami arrives in time to deflect Mihito's attack. Nanami decides he and Yuji must create openings for each other and exercise Mihito. In response, Mihito spawns an eye on his right palm and shapeshifts his left arm into a blade. The battle begins and they exchange blows. Mihito turns into a ball of spikes. He gets attacked from both sides by the sorcerers. Mihito escapes by turning into a child version of himself. Mihito returns to normal size and mutates small transfigured humans so they can attack Yuji. At the same time, Mihito focuses on getting rid of Nanami. Yuji saves Nanami in time. Now it's easier for them to overwhelm him before he can shapeshift. As they continue to beat Mihito closer to death, he activates domain expansion for the first time. He drags Nanami into his domain. Mihito thanks Nanami for helping him reach his full potential while Yuji is trapped outside the barrier. Nanami prepares to die, but Yuji breaks into Mihito's domain from the outside. This forces Mihito to touch Sukuna's soul. Sukuna cuts down Mihito, and Mihito escapes. Nanami quickly calls Takuma Ino and orders him to cut off the weakened curse and exercise Mihito. Yuji reflects and tells himself that until he kills Mihito, he won't ever lose again. Jogo relaxes somewhere in a forested area. He's soon interrupted by Gido and Mihito. Mihito expresses how glad he is that Jogo's body has regrown. Mihito explains that things didn't go well between him and Sukuna. Mihito recognizes that Sukuma is extremely valuable. Hito informs them his plan to take back the Six Fingers from Jujutsu High. Gido explains that Jujutsu High's actions surrounding Yuji are too dangerous. Instead, he allowed Jujutsu High to take the fingers they had in their possession to initiate a plan to take them back. Elsewhere, Yuji suddenly returns, excited to return to school. Meanwhile, Nobara meets Megumi and the Second Years. Panda explains that the Goodwill event will be held against Kyoto. Shortly after, the Kyoto students arrive for the event. Yudihimi, the Kyoto student counselor, arrives. Principal Masamichi Yaga explains the rules of the team battle. Spirit Bash Race. The first team to exercise the Grade 2 curse lurking around the battlefield wins. He prohibits students from injuring and killing students. However, in the Kyoto team meeting, the principal demands that his students kill Yuji with cursed energy so he can't be revived this time. Momo and Kasumi aren't sure about killing Yuji, but Noritoshi states that they will all attack him together. At the same time, Gojo meets with Yudhimi about a potential mole within the school working with curse users and curses. Fired up for the event, the Tokyo team heads to the battlefield with Yuji out front. However, Maki doesn't appreciate him taking the lead and kicks him aside. As the Goodwill event begins, both teams run directly into the forested area. Yuji asks where the Grade 2 curse could be and Panda suggests that it's likely moving around. They prepare to exercise it when Aoi suddenly appears to confront the entire team by himself. Yuji quickly attacks him. The plan was for Yuji to hold off Aoi alone to buy time. Aoi stomps Yuji's face until he falls unconscious. Yuji gets back up Aoi asks what kind of girls he likes. Yuji reveals that he likes tall girls with big bits. This triggers a memory for Aoi where Yuji helped him, despite the fact that it never actually happened. Aoi believes they're best friends and sheds tears. However, the rest of the Kyoto team quickly surrounds Yuji. He quickly realizes the Kyoto team is actually trying to kill him. Annoyed with their interference, Aoi activates his technique. This switches places of everyone in the area, saving Yuji. Aoi claims that he won't hold back, not even on his best friend. Aoi and Yuji fight, beginning to trade punches on even terms. Aoi is impressed with Yuji's ability to use the environment to his advantage. Aoi asks Yuji if he's okay with being weak relying on the divergent fist. Initially, Yuji doesn't care about being Aoi's best friend, but he refuses to stay weak. Impressed, Aoi tells his best friend that this is the correct response. 
In close quarters combat, Panda effortlessly overwhelms Mechamaru with a series of unpredictable moves. The fact that Panda gets to live free in the sun pisses Kakichi off. He uses ultimate cannon. Mechamaru believes he's won but the smoke soon clears, revealing Panda's Gorilla Mode. Panda's Gorilla Mode effortlessly breaks Mechamaru's Ultra Shield. Panda's attack damaged the puppet internally. Meanwhile, Kasumi and Maki clash with each other, and the former realizes just how powerful Maki actually is. Kasumi prepares her simple domain as Maki approaches. However, Maki breaks her own spear in half and throws a kume as a distraction, forcing Kasumi to move out of place, deactivating the domain. Watching through one of her crows, Meimei mentions that Maki should be promoted immediately. Meanwhile, Nobara is unable to catch Momo as she rides through the air on her broom. She's hit with Momo's cursed energy-infused wind and is then hit in the face with the levitating broom. Eventually, Nobara activates straw doll technique hairpin, which causes all of the nails she fired to explode. Nobara jumps and grabs one of the bristles off Momo's broom. Using straw doll technique resonance, Nobara dispels Momo's control over her broom, causing her to crash. Using her hammer, Nobara pummels Momo, but she's shot unconscious with a cursed energy-infused rubber bullet. Meanwhile, Maki comes to confront Mai in the trees. Mai begins firing, but Maki is able to easily evade the shots. At close range, Maki easily overpowers her. Megumi runs away from cursed energy-charged arrows. Megumi breaks off the tip of one of the arrows, splattering the blood on it on the wall. Eventually, both of them realize their connection to the Big Three family. Meanwhile, Tagi calls Kasumi using Mekamaru's phone and orders her to sleep. He was guided by Divine Dog, and after commanding the dog to return, Tagi notices a powerful presence. In the observing room with all the faculty, Principal Gakienji recalls assigning Moritoshi a cursed spirit meant to kill Yuji. This same curse appears before Tagi, but it's suddenly killed by the special grade cursed spirit Hanami. Meanwhile, Mihito and Juzo declare it's time for their plan to get underway. Noritoshi engages in close-range combat with Megumi until he breaks his last remaining Tanfa. Both of the sorcerers charge at one another, but their fight is suddenly interrupted by a sudden mass of branches. The faculty realizes that something unexpected has taken place. The Jujutsu students flee from Hanami's branches but end up cornered. Juzo uses a cursed object to summon a specialized curtain. Satoru, Gakugenji, and Yudahime don't make it in time as the barrier surrounds the battlefield. They prepare to break it down until Satoru realizes that this curtain denies his access. He feels tricked, thinking he was going to face Satoru Gojo. Gakugenji takes out his guitar and orders Yudahime to on ahead to save the students as first priority. Megumi attempts to reach Gojo by phone, but Hanami breaks his phone and engages the students personally with blistering speed. Hanami claims he wishes only to protect the planet and asks the sorcerers to die and become sages for the Earth, Megumi, Tabi, and Nora to run through one of the buildings. Their goal is to retreat outside the curtain. Hanami chases the boys outside and Megumi sends Nu to attack. Suddenly, Tabi's throat gives out. As Megumi decides to make a move, Tabi steps up to face Hanami alone. Just before they get within Hanami's range, Kami uses the last of his strength to blast away Hanami. Maki attacks him with a katana, but Hanami blocks it with his form, breaking the katana. Then, Megumi's black blade cursed tool cuts one of the branches on Hanami's face, but he's able to instantly regenerate it. As they are fighting Hanami and barely managing to survive, Yuji and Aoi crash down from the sky to rescue Maki. Yuji begins his attacks. He gets the opening he's looking for after a brief exchange. Yuji drools from the concentration and before the saliva even hits the ground, Yuji successfully unleashes Black Flash. Hanami reveals his left arm. He then summons giant roots that attack Yuji and Aoi. They get in close on Hanami and strike him together, but the roots suddenly disappear, causing them to fall. With the battle ramping up, Aoi decides that it's time to unleash his curse technique. Aoi and Yuji continue their battle against Hanami. Aoi analyzes the opponent's techniques, coming to the conclusion of their victory. The duo continues to push Hanami back to where their battle first started out at the river. Aoi recalls Megumi telling him that the trees on Hanami's face are his weak spots. Yuji runs over and Aoi tells him to stop moving just then as Hanami is about to activate his domain expansion. The curtain above them disappears and Gojo is revealed to be floating above the battlefield. Elsewhere, Gakugenji continues to face off against the curse user Juzo Kumia. Yudahime is seen running while Haruda attacks her from behind. However, Nobara and Mai show up to assist Yudahime. The curtain above them suddenly disappears and Haruda immediately runs away. Back at the battle against Hanami, Yuji is shocked to see Gojo floating above the battlefield. Gojo instead confronts Juzo as Gakugenji yells at him not to kill Juzo, severing his limbs instantly. Yuji tries to pursue Hanami, but Aoi stops him as he's worried that Yuji will get hurt. 
Gojo combines various curse techniques, resulting in Hollow Technique Purple. The crack caused from Purple leaves AI unable to tell if the curse was exercised. Meanwhile, Mihito manages to steal Cursed Wound Death painting along with a single Sukuna finger. Haruda is walking in an underground cave as he contemplates about not being able to do anything during the invasion. Suddenly, Hanami crashes from the ceiling of the cave. Haruda decides to try and kill Hanami, but Mihito shows up and stops him. In the following day, Gojo meets up with the students to decide whether or not they should continue the Goodwill event. Aoi speaks up and says they should continue with the event. Gojo asks Yuji to pick out a team event at random, wherein Yuji ends up choosing baseball. The 30th annual Kyoto Goodwill event finally reaches its conclusion with Tokyo High as the winner. Akari drives Megumi, Nobara, and Yuji to their mission site. They set off to investigate Saitama Yurami East Junior High, where Nobara spots some punks and says they should question them. The boys notice the group and bows in respect. Meanwhile, Mihito and Kido meet to discuss their recently obtained new cursed objects. Mihito asks why Jujutsu High doesn't destroy the objects. Hito explains that they are unable to do it when the cursed object is special grade. Sukuna's fingers are an exception as they can still attract curses and choose its vessel. Mihito forces the wound down his throat, transforming him into a cursed spirit. Meanwhile, the three students arrive at Yasohachi Bridge. After investigating the bridge, they don't find anything. Yasohachi Bridge is a hot spot for paranormal activity. Takeda also recalls that one day, four students who didn't show up to school or return home the previous night were found unconscious below the bridge. Before they depart, Takeda asks Megumi how Tsumiki is. He replies that she's fine as Yuji asks who she is. Megumi reveals that Tsumiki is his older sister. One of the punks from earlier arrives to talk to Megumi. He reveals that his sister Tsukumi also went to the bridge as she finds something sinister there. Yuji notices how shaken Megumi actually is. Megumi tells his peers that the mission is more dangerous now and tells them to go home while he goes back to the bridge alone. Megumi goes off alone to Yasohachi Bridge. Yuji and Nobara then suddenly appear behind Megumi. He explains that Sumiki is stuck in a coma and the cursed spear could kill her, so he needs to exercise it. To cross through the barrier, they must move at night from below and over the small river. They cross over into the curse's domain where they confront the mole-like cursed spirit inside. However, a curse named Kichizu appears as well. Yuji deals with Kichizu alone. Yuji is able to dodge the blood shot in by Kichizu. He manages to send Kichizu flying. Yuji notices that the blood that Kichizu spat out is acidic. Elsewhere, Nobara and Megumi try and kill a mole-like spirit, but it is quick enough to dodge them. Nobara is then taken out of the barrier by a third party. Kichizu quickly runs away from Yuji and exits the barrier, leaving Yuji shocked that it fled. Megumi tells Yuji to chase after it because Nobara was also taken out of the barrier and she could be facing something troublesome. Outside of the barrier, Nobara swings her hammer and forces the mysterious spirit to take a step back. Iso and Kichizu are there running errands and promise to do no harm to the sorcerer should they retreat. Nobara is confused by Iso's statement. Iso comments that he's there to retrieve Sukuna's finger. Inside, Megumi continues to fight the mole-like curse and states that its attack pattern is too simple. Divine Dog is able to finish it off. Noticing that the barrier hasn't been dispelled, Megumi is confused and suddenly something comes out of the opening. Megumi realizes that cursed victims began dying the same month Yuji incarnated Sukuna. Once again, he is face to face with a special grade finger bearer. With just one blast of cursed energy, Megumi's sword is broken and the finger bearer blitzes past him but fails to hand a punch as Megumi's divine dog was able to save him. The spirit knocks Megumi into a stone wall. For a moment, Megumi considers using a ritual that would ultimately sacrifice himself, but decides against that decision. He activates domain expansion. Megumi pushes himself, causing his nose to bleed as well. As the floor of the domain is covered in shadows, several frogs grab onto the curse's legs. It moves to repel them, but Megumi takes advantage of the distraction and lands a kick to his opponent. Two news cross each other to strike the curse before it decides to blow away all the liquid shadow of the large explosive barrier. With the majority of the shadows cleared out, the curse believes it has won. However, Megumi and Divine Dove appear from the behind to strike it. The curse fades away and the domain disappears along with it. Megumi holds onto one of Sukuna's fingers and wonders how to break the news about the finger to Yuji before abruptly falling asleep. Iso and Nobara both notice the presence of Sukuna's finger. Iso quickly moves away from Nobara who yells at him to come back. Suddenly, Kachizu and Yuji appear behind Iso who immediately gets angry. Angry Iso activates Rot Technique Maximum and claims the students will die. Yuji decides to pick her up and goes through the nearby forest with extreme speed. Kichizu manages to catch Yuji off guard and spits his dark blood all over him. 
just as Nobara tries to help Yuji, she's suddenly struck by Iso's attack. Iso explains how their blood is absorbed and they won't survive for too long. Nobara suddenly uses straw doll technique resonance on herself to inflict harm to Iso and Kichizu. She tells the cursed spirits to release their technique if the pain is too much for them. Iso wonders if he should release his technique. However, Yuji is unaffected because he has resistance to poison much to the surprise of Iso. Yuji punches Kachizu and trade place with Nobara. Then, Yuji starts attacking Iso who is able to block them. Iso activates Wing King again and forces Yuji back. Nobara is focused on trying to attack Kachizu. Yuji lands in front of Iso and prepares to punch him. They both channel their energy to a millionth of a second and activate Black Flash. This sends an empowered nail clean through Kachizu's head and Yuji's punch blows Iso's right arm off completely. Kachizu makes the last-ditch effort to try and take Nobara's life, attempting to devour her from behind. However, Nobara quickly detonates the nail in Kachizu's head. Yuji moves to finish Iso off but Iso is crying for his lost brother. Nobara also stops because she is surprised that Kachizu's body isn't disappearing. They realize that the death paintings aren't just cursed spirits, they are flesh and blood. Suddenly a truck comes driving out of the tunnel and Iso gets on it and takes one of the men aboard hostage. However, Nobara activates resonance again and injures Iso. He falls forward from the truck as Yuji rushes toward him and finishes him off. Elsewhere, Choso senses the death of his brothers and gets furious. Yuji and Nobara then arrive underneath the bridge and find Megumi unconscious. He was lying down with a finger which needs to be sealed as soon as possible. Yuji offers to eat the finger but Megumi is against it as they aren't sure how many Yuji can withstand. Megumi then hands Yuji the finger because he has the most energy but Sukuna makes a mouth on Yuji's palm devouring the finger. They both put in a recommendation for Yuji, Megumi, Nobara, Maki, and Panda to be promoted to grade 1 sorcerers. Yuji is out shopping with Nobara and Megumi. Yuji drops something and is yelled at by Nobara. When Megumi turns around he is suddenly contacted by Gojo. Megumi informs Yuji and Nobara that Gojo has assigned them to a top secret mission. The end. If you liked the video, give it a huge thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more anime recaps. Farewell till the next video.